The next day a German SS officer is riding on a horse, when he's ambushed by Hubler, Private Hashi, and Sergeant Christensen. The SS officer tries to gallop away, but Hubler shoots him in the head with his M1. Hubler searches the body, and finds a Luger pistol, one of his goals since he'd joined the paratroopers. Hubler tells everyone that he found one, including Lipton and Sergeant Powers. After the conversation, Hubler goes to test his new souvenir. Compton wants to know where Easy Company CO, Lt. Dyke is. Lipton can't answer exactly, because no one knows where Dyke ever goes. A sudden shot is heard, the men duck into a foxhole. Hashi appears and says that Hubler accidentally shot himself. The men go to his foxhole to help but are unable to find the wound quickly enough, and Hubler bleeds to death. The Luger he'd had stuffed into his pants pocket had inexplicably fired, severing his femoral artery. Lipton tells Captain Winters about the incident. When Winters asks why Lieutenant Dyke isn't relaying the news, Lipton says it's because Dyke is nowhere to be found. The next morning, we see Perconti, Christensen, and Harold Webb discussing the rumor about what Lieutenant Spears did in Normandy and how he gunned down some German POWs after offering them cigarettes. Spears himself appears and tells them that the foxhole they've dug needs to be deeper and better camouflaged, but they say Dyke said it was good enough. He then offers them a cigarette, and the men's faces show horror because of the story about the POWs. Easy returns to the front line in the forest just outside of Foy. As they dig new foxholes and strengthen the existing ones, they are bombarded several times. A shell hits very close to Joe Toy, and his right leg is severed above his knee. Garnier rushes out and begins to drag Toy to safety when another shell explodes near both of them, shredding Garnier's right leg. The shock of the situation has become Compton's breaking point, and he is taken off the front line. The worst shelling takes place at night and sees Corporal Penkala and Sergeant Skip Muck's foxhole take a direct hit, a moment witnessed by George Luz. A shell also lands next to Luz and Lipton's foxhole, but doesn't explode. Lipton is so shaken he takes a cigarette from Luz even though he doesn't smoke. Muck and Penkala were good friends of Malarkey who becomes saddened by their deaths. To boost his mood a bit, Lipton gives Malarkey Hubler's Luger for his younger brother. Lipton says to Winters that the attack of Foy they are going to carry out the next day will result in lots of good men getting killed if Dyke isn't replaced. The next day, the men prepare to attack. Winters runs through the plan with Dyke and tells him he's relying on him. The attack begins with the men running across the open field. Lipton tells his men to move fast and to keep doing so until they reach the town. Foley breaks off with 1st platoon to clear out a small shack. Dyke stops in the middle of open territory telling radio man George Luz to get Foley on the radio. Dyke has all of Easy Company stop advancing much to Winter's dismay. Lipton orders 2nd platoon to find cover. Dyke tells Foley over the radio to get back to where he can see him. Lipton also goes to where Dyke has taken cover, asking what Dyke's next orders are. Winters radios into Luz to tell him to get Dyke on the radio. Foley arrives just as we see from Dyke's perspective that he is panicking under all the stress of the battle. Obviously not thinking, Dyke tells Foley to take 1st platoon on a flanking mission despite the fact they will have little adequate cover and will be cut off from the company. Foley tells the men what Dyke wants them to do. They begin to advance only for them to be pinned down by a sniper. Realizing Dyke is losing it, Winters runs out of the tree line to take his place but is stopped by Colonel Sink because he is Battalion XO. Realizing he isn't allowed, Winters brushes off Sink and shouts for Spears and tells him to relieve Dyke and take command. Spears arrives and relieves the shell-shocked Dyke. Spears tells Lipton he wants the building to be blasted by grenades and mortars until it's gone, when it is gone, 1st platoon should head straight in and abandon Dyke's orders to flank the village. The sniper is taken down by a mortar and the men quickly enter Foy and push through fast. They get halfway through but are faced with a dilemma. A company is on the other side and is being attacked by armor, meaning they'll slip away from the others. While the village is filled with attacking Germans, Spears makes a suicidal run through the German front line. Lipton narrates that the Germans didn't try to kill Spears because they were shocked at what they were seeing. However the most remarkable thing about what Spears did wasn't that he successfully connected with I, company, but that he ran back the same way he'd gone. After capturing Foy, the men listened to a choir that night. Lipton spends much of the night making up a roster of the men remaining. Out of the 145 that went into Bastogne, only 63 are left. Spears, now officially in charge of the company, approaches Lipton and begins to talk about the recent events. 
Lipton says the men are just thankful to have a good leader again but Spears surprises him by saying they already had a good leader, someone who stuck by them and kept their spirits up during the worst times. Lipton doesn't understand who he means, leading to Spears to tell Lipton that he is that man. Spears also tells him that Winters put in a battlefield commission for him, and Sink approved it. Spears reveals to Lipton he has been promoted to lieutenant.